Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Patra. Well, India's residential market is buzzing. Housing sales in India are at an all-time high as residential sales between July and September are now up 36% from last year. And this is as per real estate consultant Anarog. To discuss the demand outlook going forward from here, joining us on this special edition is Mr. Anuj Puri, the chairman and founder of Anarog. Welcome, Mr. Puri, and thank you so much for taking the time out for discussing the insights from your latest report. Help us understand a little bit deeper. Despite the monsoons that we've seen, the tepid monsoons, the quarter usually sees a slower market momentum. But uh, what has happened this time around is that the top seven cities, as per your report, have recorded phenomenal housing sales of over 1.2 lakh units. Help us understand what is the key reason behind it and does it have to do uh, with any of the kind of uh, slowdown or the pause in repo rates that has been maintained by the RBI as well? So thank you very much, Sachi, to have uh, me on your show. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, it is true is that uh, this quarter has been the best quarter, which is July, August, September, that Indian real estate has ever seen. So it is like, you know, phenomenal. We've not seen 120,000 units being sold in a single quarter. And if I can take you back, uh, Sakshi, to pre-COVID level in 2019-20, uh, the financial year, at that time, 165,000 units were sold across India for the full year. Okay. And now we're saying is that 120,000 units are being sold in a quarter. Wow. So that uh, so so if you look at it, it's nearly about five hundred thousand units we are coming up to from one hundred and sixty five thousand units pre COVID in 2019-20. So in the last three four years, you know we've grown nearly three times or two and a half times on the sales. So you, you're you're very right. Is that one of the reasons is that the repo rates and the home loan, uh, you know, that increase has stopped and has brought in some semblance. And the thought is that unlikely it will increase from here. Hmm. The second is the demand for housing continues to remain very robust. Despite COVID having gone away, still a lot of people are working from home and hence the home sale continues to go up. Third, I think it is a lot to do with social security. And we are seeing this uh, you know, product, this asset class, uh, where people are saying that it doesn't matter uh, if it does not give the right yield, I'm buying it to live there. I want to you know, have a proper, proper you know, place to be able to stay. It is not about investment in this. And lastly, we're seeing the growth in the prices as well. So if you look at it, uh, you know, about 10 to 12 percent growth in the prices itself has happened. And that is what is prompting. Uh, and it is, I mean, these are facts, Sachi, ultimately, that 165,000 units a full year in 2019-20. And today we are saying in a quarter, 120,000 units and best ever that India has seen. So clearly there is something happening right uh, within Wonderful. the residential market. Wonderful. Uh, that's great that you set the context right for us to understand and delve a little bit deeper as well. Uh, in your report, you mentioned that Mumbai and Pune have been the topmost cities where maximum sales have happened in this quarter. Uh, you also said that the prices have also gone up 10-12%. What was the average ticket price in these two top cities? Um, and uh, you know, do you see the surge in prices to continue as we head towards the peak season? That's the festive season as well. So between Bombay and Pune, 51% of the total sales was there. So it is pretty robust. You, you know, the West India contributed 51% of the total sales in the, in the quarter. Okay. That's the first uh, uh, answer to the question. The second one is Sachi, I hope and I pray that the prices don't continue to go up like this. Yeah. Uh, because if it continues to go up like this, Sachi, at some stage, it will go beyond the ability of the home buyer to pay. Hmm. So I am hoping with the input cost getting a lot more controlled now, inflation under control, hopefully the raw material that goes in construction, hopefully the labor cost getting in control, that we will not continue to see such stark price rise that is happening. So I am, I, as I said, you know, I, I don't like it. Uh, I don't want it because it does break the momentum. Uh, there is only that much ability for a home buyer to be able to pay. Mm -hmm. Yes, till now the prices have gone up because for five years prior to COVID, prices hadn't gone up. As a result of it, there was a bit of a catch up. 
uh, to be done. I would say that we are almost about that level where the catch up has been done. So continuing on the same pace of growth in the prices will only damage the momentum of sales. And there is an, and as I said, is that hopeful that inflation having got controlled and you know what had happened with Russia Ukraine war at the time when you know the steel prices and uh, all the prices of the raw materials had started to climb. You know they've come under control and hopefully uh, you know the uh, the input cost will remain under control and hence the developers will not increase the prices to that uh, extent. Mm -hmm. As far as your third question is concerned, is that what is the average selling price? Uh, of the of the units in Pune, it's about sixty to seventy five lakh rupees as an average price of a, a residential. In Bombay, it's between one point two to one point five crores. Okay, okay, got that. So uh, you know, you did say that the maximum sales happened in Mumbai and Pune, but have the prices also gone up maximum in Mumbai or Pune, or has there been any other city that has so, seen a uh, yeah. prices have been uniform? Sachin, the good thing is that this increase in the prices is not as much which is improving the bottom line of the developer. Largely, this increase in the price has been because the input cost went down. As a result of which, the developer is not absorbing the input cost. They're passing that input cost to the consumer, to the home buyer. As a result of which, the prices have, uh, uh, have gone up. And because the input cost has gone up universally across all cities, that's where we're seeing that the prices have increased universally. Uh, yeah. rather than in any particular city that it has uh, it has increased okay so could you also help us uh, understand in terms of the new property supply how was the growth in this quarter again and what's the outlook uh, what's the pipeline looking like so the new supply has been slower than the sales okay uh, so whilst uh, you know the sales this uh, this quarter quarter on quarter uh, sorry, year to quarter has increased by 36%. The supply has gone up by 24%. Okay. Uh, as a result of which, what's happening is actually the unsold inventory that was there, hmm. that is starting to sharply come down. Which is uh, a good thing. Which, which is good in a way that, uh, you know, the supply and demand is really matching itself. It's not healthy to have too much of unsold inventory because unnecessarily it causes grief on the developer's balance sheet. Hmm. Equally, it is not nice where the inventory is getting into negative because then the prices sharply go up. At this moment in time, we are quite well poised between demand and supply. Because consistently over the last few quarters, the sales has been more than the new supply. As a sure. result of it, overhang that was there pre-COVID of the unsold inventory has steadily been coming down. And today we are almost at that par between demand and supply. Great. Okay. Uh, help me uh, get this understanding as well uh, into place for all our viewers. You know, what we've been hearing over the last three, four months, five months odd is that the moment um, luxury properties were announced, you know, uh, projects were announced, pre-sales happened in a day, everything was sold off in a day. I wanted to understand, has the demand also really scaled up only in the luxury space or the high ticket size prices or even the, uh, you know, affordable housing segments have seen that demand in this quarter? So, I'll answer, it's a very interesting question. I'll answer in two parts. Uh, Sachi, and you know, it is uh, it is a little bit of a marketing thing that we guys do it that we say it got sold in a day. Yeah. And I'll now tell your viewers it is actually not true. We don't sell it in a day. Okay. We're collecting checks over a period of time. Over like, you know, 30 days, 45 days, 60 days. We collect the checks over a period okay. of time. We bank it on one day. Right. So you get the news that we sold it on one day. Hmm. <laughs> so I just, I just wanted to clarify that okay. it is very difficult to sell it on a single day, you know, that yeah. high value inventory. So we've been working behind the scenes, hmm. but we the day we open it up, that's the day we bank all the checks. But those checks had been collected over 30, 45, 60 day uh, period. So the, the secret is out today. Uh, uh, <laughs> that is. 
Uh, Absolutely. That, that, otherwise, you know, it is very difficult to comprehend that how can you sell inventory yes. of that high value in on a single day? Very difficult because the buyer wants to come in. They want to look at the plan. They want to see which floor, which side, how's the vastu, etc. You don't. You can't buy that at an impulse. You know, it's not like yeah. a white shirt. That you're yeah. just going, just picking up a white shirt. These are crores of properties. Uh, so that's that's the uh, first thing is. Second is that the demand has been across the board, whether it is okay. affordable, whether it is mid level, whether it's premium or whether it's luxury. Luxury does get uh, um, sort of the maximum visibility because these are transactions of like twenty, fifty, hundred crore per unit. Hmm. Uh, in the race, so it does get that visibility, but the demand has been across the board. Okay, okay. And what would be the outlook for this upcoming festive season? Where exactly do you see the top demand coming in, both geographically and segment-wise as well, of the residential properties when we talk about? So I, I do think is uh, Sakshi that Mumbai will continue to lead. Uh, you know, uh, so, so there is no doubt about it. Over the last few quarters, Mumbai has been leading, and Mumbai will continue. Uh, to uh, to lead, my guess is Pune and Hyderabad will be number two and number three, uh, even in uh, the festive uh, quarter. I'm hoping that the demand continues to remain pretty robust. Uh, you know, I see no reason why the demand is going to uh, go down. Um, you know, the developers who are selling their inventory are still pricing it uh, sort of reasonably. Uh, they're not also coming out with any artificial gimmicks that they used to come in the past years, uh, you know, near Diwali and festive season. So I, I do see that the demand continues to remain pretty stable. You know, economy st remains stable. Job market looks st stable. I hope that the interest rates don't, you know, go up. So with the new launches that are going to be coming up in various cities, uh, the demand should stack up and Bombay would continue to lead, perhaps followed by Pune and Hyderabad. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, to understand, you, you said that the demand was across the board, both in luxury, mid and even the affordable segments as well. As a trend, what we had noticed post-COVID is that because of the work from home culture that you also talked about, uh, a lot of people were buying bigger homes to have an in-home uh, office space as well. Does that trend continue even now? Is that also a trend that you're witnessing in the supply situation as well? Have things started to change away a little bit? So it, it is true is that uh, po you know during COVID everybody wanted bigger, uh, better, more airy, more open, newer. Uh, also, you know societies which had more facilities, more infrastructure, better security, uh, and that trend continues. Although I must say one thing that you highlighted that it was it was getting bigger, 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 bigger. I think that trend has got arrested. Uh, where you know people are saying is that it, I don't want more, more, more bigger now in that is so it has got arrested, and and the reason for that such is that it has got arrested is because ultimately you know it is about the ticket price, it is about how much can I pay for that. Yes, I want even more bigger, but at some, at some stage I need to also see my pocket. So that's sure. where this trend has got arrested today. So it is not going, you know, previously it was every quarter we were seeing the trend was moving towards bigger, 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 bigger. That has stopped now. Okay. Has it started to reverse? No, it hasn't started to reverse. Okay. Also, uh, wanted to understand in terms of investments purely, what kind of a demand have you seen? Uh, because, you know, real estate sector has really come uh, off uh, from a long haul of uh, underperformance. After that, uh, to get back the confidence of investors, uh, just for an investment point of view, have you seen demand surge even for that purpose and not just for own consumption? Not at all, Sachi, which is interesting. Uh, you know, fortunately, I would say not there because, you know, these investors, if it is long term, it's OK. If they are speculators and they're short term, they destroy the market. Fortunately, we haven't yet seen. And maybe it's actually because stock market is doing so well yeah. that they're still going into the stock market and not coming into the real estate market. Yes, in many cities, you have 10 percent, 15 percent investors, which is OK. That much, you know, you, you're quite okay with that is. But otherwise, we haven't seen investors come into this. Uh, and maybe also, actually, the investors don't believe that you're going to get 
20 percent, 30 percent return year on year. You know, they believe is yes, it may have 10, 12 percent, whichever what the price appreciation is, and maybe that is not exciting uh, for them. Which is in a way good for real estate because these are then end users who are coming in and who are going to be there for a very long period of time, rather than speculators who are just going to flip it. Uh, and it just causes unnecessary grief. Okay. Uh, since this has been the best quarter ever, uh, do you think this trend can sustain, um, you know, going forward from here? We are looking at the peak festive season coming ahead. Uh, do you believe this performance can be repeated in the next quarter as well? And compared to the pre-COVID period, which you mentioned that 1.65 lakh units were sold in a year, at least are we looking at uh, overcoming that, shooting that and, you know, uh, going beyond the pre-COVID levels? Uh, so certainly we will go beyond the pre-COVID levels actually. So it was 1.65 lakh units a year sure. before COVID. We will be touching about 5 lakh units this year. So, you know, it is like two and a half times of uh, of that. So certainly that is there. So uh, how I'm high hoping, would that be? How many years high would that 5 lakh units be then? Uh, from memory, I can tell you is the last that I had seen uh, was 2008. Wow. Okay. So you're, you're really talking, you know, pretty high. And that also 2008 was a little artificial, uh, Sakshi. I, I don't know how much time we have. Is, but, you know, really it wasn't genuine because it was all speculator led and it was largely NCR, uh, you know, which was quite artificial at that time. This 500,000 is real end user solid demand. Uh, and then finally, to answer the other question that you asked is, I'm, I'm hoping that this trend continues. Uh, you know, over the next few quarters. Again, I say is that I don't see any reason why the trend will not continue given the solidity of the economy, the Indian real estate, the pedigree player, the consolidations that has taken place and the genuine demand that is coming in from the home buyers. Okay, well, on that note, many thanks, Mr. Puri, for being with us on this very special edition and giving us all these insights from your wonderful report. And this definitely gives us an overview of uh, where the real estate market is headed. Here's hoping for many more interactions even going forward to understand this entire very, very preferred sector by the Indian investors for generations now and uh, to get more insights as to uh, what the future holds for this sector uh, going forward. Many thanks for being with us. And uh, with that, we wrap up this special edition for you. Do stay tuned on to Business Today Television to get more insights from the world of business and stock markets. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.